Tonight, a routine restaurant inspection finds unhealthy food storage. What the hell's going on here? I don't even want to think that that's food that anybody's going to get. A very dodgy toileting arrangement. So how long's the toilet been there, then? One week. One week, yeah. right. Because you can't really put a toilet on a deck. <laughs> and a backyard mechanic bending the truth in Auckland. How about this vehicle here? It all belongs to me. How about this one? That's right. only my car. So is this... Um... That's, that's mine. Oh, that's, that's your mine car. car. In Dunedin, Environmental Health Officer Wayne Boss is heading out from the council for a routine inspection at a takeaway. Hello? Dunedin City Council operates a grading system based on the food safety regulations. Once a year, food premises are inspected for their work practices, standard of cleanliness, the state of the building structure, and finally, staff training. They are then graded excellent, good, adequate or poor. Quickly show me around and then I'll let you get on with your work and I'll do mine, all right? Okay. Thanks. Yeah. This takeaway is currently graded a good B. It's changed hands in the past year, so can the new operators maintain or improve on the standards set by the previous owner? I mean, we start with the cleanliness of the outside areas as well because that can attract pests and you can get them inside and that. So I'm looking at the waste traps here and these gullies and traps are not that clean really. You can see it's been overflowing and that's because they get so much peelings and uh, rice and things like that down there and it needs a, a good clean really. Not impressed with that there really. Oh, he said um, he'd clean it every week. He needs to clean it more than every week then, because it's not clean enough, oh, yeah? yeah? Moving on, Wayne heads for the area where they prepare the potatoes to be made into chips. And that's your peeler, or rumbler, potato rumbler, and you just stick the whole load of potatoes in there and it gets them all peeled, spits them out to there, and this is going to be the chipper. The potato area is dark and damp, ideal conditions for bacteria and other disease carriers to live and thrive. Yeah. Oh, good. I don't know what that is. That's mould in, in the black in the, in the handle. And this is mould creeping up the wall here. The mould in this room is excessive, probably from all the water that's used to wash and peel the spuds and the equipment. It's soaked into the walls, and as a result, the crude timber cladding is rotting away. They are hard areas in potato areas, right? What I would advocate is that they metal sheet clad or plastic sheet clad these walls to about that height, and then that will stand all the washing and the hosing down. But this, this kind of wood boarding stuff isn't going to stand the type of use for this area. Structural problems like this are a bad start and likely to prevent a high grade being allocated to the operator. <laughs> That's cooked pork. Yes, sweet out pork. All right. This takeaway does Chinese dishes as well as fish and chips and burgers. They're in the midst of preparing for the day, and it's an ideal opportunity for Wayne to assess all aspects of their food safety. Yeah, if you have a general look, cleaning really needs a bit of improvement here. A lot of spillages and debris on the floor, on the shelves, in the corners, things like that. With the kitchen looking filthy, what hygiene horrors await Wayne inside the freezer? Oh dear. Having items unwrapped like this is just stupid. What on earth? You know? Oh, I just don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Look at this. Ah, oh, dear you, mate. I don't even want to think that that's food that anybody's going to going to get. But I mean, what the blooming hell's going on here? Wayne's dumbfounded at the state of the food storage. Um. It looks like these operators have some serious explaining to do.
Meanwhile, at the North Shore City Council, Building and Compliance Officer Graham Jones has an unusual day ahead dealing with an illegal build. Unlawful construction without council consent can pose a very serious risk to public health, safety and the environment. We've got a couple of problems at the property. It's the job of Graham and his team to keep the DIY mad New Zealand public in check. And this morning, Graham is heading out for a not-so-routine inspection. We've been called to this house because there's, uh, we've had a complaint. There's actually a toilet that's been plumbed in on the deck outside. A disgruntled local alerted the council to this very bizarre alteration. A small outdoor deck and clear view of the neighbours has been enclosed with plastic and transformed into what appears to be a toilet. Good morning. Hi, good morning. From the council. I'm here because I've had a complaint about a toilet on the deck. Is it your house? Do, do you mm, own the house? No. no, no. no. Who, whose house is it? Mm, daughter. Your daughter's house? Um, daughter. Right. Let's have a look and see what's there. Can I come in and have a, have a look? If it is a toilet and it is operational, then it raises a whole raft of safety issues for Graham. But what he actually finds is a complete surprise. And you've got a sink here as well. Is this plumbed in as well? Mm. Yeah? Mm. You've got hot water here too. Mm. This little deck is housing a complete kitchen facility which, until this point, the council knew nothing about and therefore hasn't consented. You use this for cooking, do you, as well? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Mm. OK. Is all this original or have you put it in? Oh, yeah. You put it in? Mm. OK. And to confirm the neighbours' suspicions, there is a toilet in the space as well. What's more, it appears to be working. Mm. Right, there's water connected to it though, is there? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Mm. Who put this in for you? Who put it in? You put it in? <laughs> right. Where does the drain go to? To the... To the you should, we'll have a look outside in a minute. You can show me where you connected it. Yeah? yeah? This man's taken Kiwi inventiveness to a whole new level with his deck makeover, but it raises very serious questions about public health and safety. How long's it been like this? Half year, maybe half year. About half year? About six yeah. months? So how long's the toilet been there then? One week. One week, yeah. right. Because you can't really put a toilet on a deck. <laughs> Can you show me where that pipe work goes from the toilet? Because let's have a look at that first outside. Graham's concerned the raw sewage and kitchen discharge are going into the stormwater. If they are, then the public and the environment are at serious risk. Where does that pipe there go? Is that sewer or stormwater? In South Auckland, resource management planner David Francis is responding to a complaint about a suspected backyard mechanic operating in an otherwise quiet residential area. Operating a business from home that doesn't comply with the district plan home enterprise rules, such as traffic generation, hours of operation, visual impact and noise, requires resource consent. We're here to investigate a property that has received a complaint about the amount of cars and other vehicles that are on the property at the moment. It's carrying out car repairs, dismantling cars to salvage parts. There are serious penalties facing the operator of a home business which doesn't have consent and is having a negative impact on the neighbourhood. Pricey infringement notices or even legal proceedings leading to imprisonment for up to two years or up to $200,000 in fines. Hi, you remember me I'm from uh, yeah, Bodicom yeah, yeah, yeah. City Council? Yeah. So we're just having a quick look at the extent of the activity. While there are at least 14 vehicles on the property, the man does have an explanation. So is this um, being spray painted for the purposes of resale? Yeah, this this is mine. Oh, that's this your mine car. And you're going to resale? No, no, that's that's for my car. Okay, for your own. For your seat. For your seat. Okay. Yeah, this yes. all belongs to me. Right. Yeah, okay. because uh, it's not allowed. I know the rules. Right. It's not allowed to fix anybody's car. Right. Just only my car. It appears the owner knows that these vehicles have to be used for normal residential purposes, which means commuting and recreational use, not being repaired or done up to be sold. Can I have a quick look around? Yeah. 
Down the side of the garage, large numbers of spare parts suggest the man's running an operation on a reasonably large scale. Some out of my cars just bought it and um, stripped the parts and take it back to the island. That's right. why I uh, so many cars here. Right. Yeah. The man has just confirmed David's suspicions that he's running a home enterprise. So, um, how many cars would that involve over a period of a year, say? Well. That you're taking parts out and sending them to your family, or to not, your father? Not one, one a week or some... One a week? Oh, okay. Some cars, not, not, not anymore. Not a uh, month, a month, nothing. So, sort of averages to a month. Yes. Yeah. Yes. OK. The man has admitted to purchasing around 26 cars a year. David definitely has an environmental infringement to enforce. Back in Dunedin, Inspector Wayne Boss has uncovered serious health risks. Oh, good. I don't know what that is. Cleanliness and food storage practices are well below par at this takeaway. I don't even want to think that that's food that anybody's going to going to get. But I mean, the blooming hell's going on here. Even though it's frozen, this food should be in sealed bags or sealed containers and clearly labelled. It's food storage 101, and it's not happening in this establishment. Look at this. What? What, what's happening? Yes. Who, who's this food for? No, 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 no. no, this, no. Um, in, in this basket, uh, we don't use that, but we don't have time to, to clean it. Are you saying this is your personal food? Yes. Yes. What about these? What this the... is my personal. This is the deer bone. A deer bone? Yeah. What's this? We use that to, to do the onion sausages. So we make them and then, and then put it here until it's uh, frozen and then we will cut it and then deep fry it. So that's the raw meat, sausage meat, yes. with onion. And you've mixed all that together and then put it in that box? Yes. Well, I'm really disappointed in that freezer. Oh. I haven't finished looking around yet, so I'll carry on, but we'll talk more about these things. Yeah, OK. Wayne's only halfway through the inspection, and already their current B grade is looking very shaky. And why not use a nice plastic container instead of a flipping cardboard box? You know, uh, I don't know. I'm struggling with that. I wish I hadn't opened that fridge. <laughs> but that's just one of a number of fridges and coolers. See what we got in here? <laughs> Cooked rice. It looks old, but Wayne can't be sure because none of the food is labelled or dated. Oh, are you using Can I do... Oh, you're going to use that? Just yeah. Come on, let's just sit. Wait a second. How old is this? Just have a look. Just have a look. How old's that? How old? Yeah. Is to today. 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 In the morning. Yes. Right. I'm struggling to believe you, really, to be honest, because it looks no. so stuck on there. No, no, no. It looks as though it's been in there for a few days. Yes. No, no, no. Every day will be clean. Fresh rice. Yes, I have a new one. In the in the in the, in the rice cooker. Yes. And you want that? This there. is not enough to. In oh yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Cooked rice is a common cause of foodborne illness. If after cooking it's allowed to cool too slowly, it can be the ideal environment for bacteria which produce a toxin causing nausea, vomiting and diarrhoea. Unfortunately, reheating the rice before serving won't destroy this nasty toxin. The area where they store fresh produce throws up a fresh surprise for Wayne. What struck me immediately, I walked in here, it was carpet on the floor of a food storage room. It's an absolute no-no. It can't be cleaned. And then it also struck me that it was being used as a room for partially living and sleeping in, and that's not permitted in the food regs. You cannot have a sleep, sleeping room communicating with a food room. Hiding amongst the confusion of beds, computers, personal belongings and bins of food is another chiller. But this is quite common what they do is they cook a whole lot but they don't give us any idea of what they've cooked and when they cooked it and when they're going to use it by. 
Again, the sloppy food practices don't impress Wayne. That B grade is slipping further and further away. On Auckland's North Shore, Building and Compliance Officer Graham Jones is investigating a grievance from a displeased neighbour. Hi, good morning from the council. I'm here because I've had a complaint about a toilet on the deck. But what he found was a toilet in a kitchen on a deck, all of which may be discharging straight into the stormwater system. Where does that pipe there go? Is that sewer or stormwater? The man doesn't appear to know. If it is going into the stormwater, it's a serious health risk. Yeah, but is that the sewer or is that the stormwater? I can't work out if it's connected into the stormwater or into the sewer, but either way, it can't stay there. But the surprises keep coming. Did you put this toilet here or has oh, it yeah, always been yeah, here? Yeah. You put this toilet in here as well? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, how long ago? Right. So that's two additional toilets now which could be discharging into the stormwater system. Until we find yeah. where that pipe goes to, don't use that toilet on the deck oh. or the toilet by the back door because if they're connected into the stormwater, it means the sewage is going straight into the stormwater, mm. not into the sewer. Mm. And I can't tell by just looking at it whether that's a sewer mm. or a stormwater. I suspect it's stormwater. Mm. Regardless of the unconfirmed discharge problem, the toilets and kitchen are illegal, dangerous and must be dealt with. But I was saying as well, this other toilet, the ones at the back of the garage, that's not something that I can leave like that. It's just not acceptable, unfortunately. Yeah. It's going to have to go. Yeah. Okay. But if you could take that other one out, that would be really good. If I come back next week and it's gone, that would be yeah, a good start. Yeah, OK. All right? Yeah, OK. All right, thanks for your cooperation. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. What we've got there is a deck with a kitchen created on it and a toilet put in it. So the whole, you know, there shouldn't be a kitchen on a deck and there shouldn't be a toilet on a deck. The owner did disable the kitchen and toilet on the balcony, and Graham later discovered that the waste pipe was discharging into the sewer. And it was up to the owners to obtain council approval for the interior toilet, or it too would have to be disabled. Back in South Auckland, resource management planner David Francis has been investigating a complaint about an illegal backyard mechanic. Hi, you remember me? I'm from uh, yeah, 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 yeah. City Council? Yeah. But what he found was excuse. Yeah, this yes. all belongs to me. Right. Yeah. After excuse. Somebody, um, they've been on a car here before. Mm -hmm. After yet more excuses. Some out of my cars, they put it and strip the parts and take it back to the island. But a breakthrough finally came when the man admitted buying around 26 cars a year. So sort of averages to a month. Yes. Yeah. yeah. OK. This level of activity is not considered to be for normal residential purposes and is therefore a breach of the council's district plan. The fact that there are so many cars in terms of the complaint that it's operating as a business, that would be fairly solid evidence that a business is occurring. Over a dozen cars is pretty solid evidence, but the man now claims the cars belong to family. David is doubtful. How about this one that you've got up on um, oh, this, Jacks? This one belongs to my family, my father. Oh, OK. And my grandfather, this one. It's very family oriented of you. Yeah. Um, so they don't give you any sort of remuneration? No. No, OK. There's no paying the money. Because I got no uh, business card, nothing. No office, to, no yes. office. Yes, yes. It's not about business cards or an office. It's a question of whether there's an exchange of money or goods for profit. So given that you are doing all these car repairs for free, how is it that you earn a living? My wife working. OK. My wife working. So this is all done for the benefit of your family? Yeah. OK. The man's argument didn't convince David. He gave him an abatement notice stating that he must comply with the rules of the district plan relating to home enterprise activity. David continued to monitor the property and ran more registration checks that showed the man was breaching the abatement notice by continuing to repair and dismantle motor vehicles not for normal residential purposes. 
An environmental infringement notice was then issued, along with a costly $750 fine. Should the operator continue to breach the district plan, further fines could follow, and even prosecution in the courts. In Dunedin, Health Officer Wayne has been inspecting a takeaway, with not very good results. Well, I'm really disappointed in that freezer. The more he inspected, the more unsafe practices he uncovered. How old's that? How old? Yeah. It's today. Today. Right. I'm struggling to believe you, really. Overall, Wayne feels negligence by the operators is putting diners at risk. For me, structurally, the premises is quite old. There's a little bit of maintenance to do. But for me, the biggest shocking area is the food storage. I'm not happy with the stock rotation, not happy with their cleaning inside some of the food storage units and that. And that reflects really in that it's only going to get a C grade, which is just acceptable, it's not good. The takeaway had a good B grade before this inspection, so this is a big drop in standards and not a good start for these people who have recently taken over the business. I'm just going to tell you what the grade's going to be to start with. It's not, it's not very good. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right, it's going to be a C grade. Uh -huh. um, and you've really got to show some improvement in some areas, right? Yep. You're just one little mark off being closed on a D grade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wayne returned to the takeaway three days later. Although a huge effort had been made to rectify some of the structural and cleanliness issues, Wayne felt there was still some way to go. The operators retained their C grade for a further two months, at which time they're eligible to apply for a regrade.